If you ever wanted to set up a home media server, but you thought it was too expensive or too complicated, well, in this video, we're gonna show you it's neither expensive nor complicated. But first, what is a home media server? In its simplest terms, a home media server is a computer appliance and software application that stores digital media like video, audio, and images and makes it available over your entire network. And just about any computer device can be a home media server, like a laptop, a Raspberry Pi, a router, and even a desktop computer. As a matter of fact, the computer directly behind me is a home media server. And we have access to hundreds of movies and TV shows on our entire network. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to transform a very old desktop computer into a suite home media server. And all you need is some extra storage drives that you probably have laying around, or worst case scenario, you could buy a couple of hard drives online for a minimal price. And for this video, we bought two four terabyte hard drives from Western Digital and paid less than $170, not bad. The software we're gonna install today is TrueNAS Scale and it's completely free. And we'll also install Plex, which is free as well. So my basic rules for the minimum requirements for a home media server is a CPU with four cores and four threads, a minimum of eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, but 16 gigabytes would be optimal. And your motherboard should support USB 3.0 as well as SATA 3.0. And you should have a dedicated GPU if possible. Nothing fancy. You'll also want a DVD and Blu-ray burner to copy your DVDs and Blu-rays to your hard drives. And lastly, you should have a small SSD drive to store your OS. 50 gigs to 120 gigs is plenty. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to install the hard drives on this computer and how to install TrueNAS Scale on this computer as well as Plex. And we'll go through all the steps, so don't worry. So first things first, let's go over the specs of our old desktop computer. Our motherboard is a Sabertooth X79 with the LGA 2011 socket. Our CPU is the Intel i7-3930K at 3.2 gigahertz. And we're rocking 32 gigs of sweet DDR3 RAM, which is more than we're ever gonna need. But more RAM, is more better. Our GPU is the GeForce GTX 1660 Ti, and our power supply is the 850 watt thermal take. And last but not least, we have an Asus Blu-ray and DVD burner to convert all of our DVDs and Blu-rays to digital format. Because I'm no pirate, and if I was one, I wouldn't <laughs> tell you anyways. Our current uh. Windows OS is on a 120 gig Samsung SSD. And just a heads up, when we install TrueNAS Scale to the SSD, it's gonna reformat the entire SSD. So bye bye Windows. So if you have any important data on the SSD, make sure to copy it somewhere else before installing TrueNAS Scale. So first things first, let's install the hard drives. Oh, and guys, don't forget, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. It helps the algorithm. Thanks. All right, so we're set up with two SATA cables going into the motherboard and our two power connections that will power our hard drives. There's one. And we'll do exactly the same there. And then we'll connect the power right there. The installation process for TrueNAS Scale is smooth and straightforward, just like this coffee. So first you wanna download the TrueNAS Scale ISO image, then save it to your computer. And then you wanna download Belina Etcher and then launch it. And then click on flash from file and then click on the ISO image. Then next you wanna select target, which is the USB drive. And then it's gonna ask you to format the USB drive and go ahead and do that and then start the process. And this takes about five to 10 minutes. And then once you're done, simply plug the USB into your soon to be home media server. And now you wanna reboot your home media server and then go into the BIOS setting by pressing F2. Keep pressing that until you get into the BIOS settings. And once you're in the BIOS setting, then go to boot priority, then select the USB to be the boot drive. And then next, reboot the computer. And from here, TrueNAS will start the installation process. And this installation process takes around 10 minutes. So go ahead and select one for installation. Next, you wanna choose a hard drive to install the TrueNAS scale software. And you want to install the software to the small SSD drive. Next, go ahead and select one for admin user. Next, change the password to whatever you want. I recommend a strong password. And go ahead and create the swap. And then next, go ahead and reboot the computer. Once you get everything installed and reboot the system, you're gonna see this screen. And take note at the very top of the network IP address. You're gonna use this IP address in any browser on your network. The next you wanna log in, I have admin as my username, and then type in my password, and here's the dashboard. So now we're gonna take a look at the dashboard and take a look at all the menus, and then we'll create a storage pool. All right, now that we're logged in, we can see our TrueNAS scale dashboard and all the widgets. And we have six here, and uh, we can reorder these if you want. Hit the reorder, you can move them around and customize them, it's pretty cool. So just do as you will with that. You can also configure, you can uh, add or subtract these if you'd like, like that. Go back and add them, super easy. 
So the only complaint I would have about this dashboard is there's not enough of these widgets. If you look over here to these tabs, I feel that each tab should be a widget. I don't know why they didn't do that. Uh, maybe in a software update, they could add that. But other than that, this looks pretty good, very functional. So let's go to storage and create a pool. First things first, we're gonna call it pool. Make it super simple. And we'll hit next. And because we only have two hard drives, we're gonna be doing mirror. If we have more drives, we can set this up as RAID Z1 or RAID Z2. But right now, just gonna do the mirror and hit next. And we'll go through all these and just go next through all of these. And uh, create the pool. Confirm, it's gonna wipe these hard drives, but there's nothing on the hard drives anyways. And this should take about 30 seconds to create the pool. It's pretty quick. And there we go. Here is our storage dashboard with topology, usage, ZFS health, and disk health. And one thing also, if you want to delete a pool, go to export, disconnect, click on all these, and then type in pool or whatever the name of your pool is, and hit this button right here, it will delete the pool. We're not gonna do that today, but that's how you would do that. All right, the next thing we need to do is go to credentials, and we're gonna to go to users. We gotta create a user so we can uh, start using the NAS. So let's go to add, and we're gonna type in, well, the name of this YouTube channel. Sounds good to me, so that's what it is. Ultimate Tech Hub, username is uHub. I do like that. Pretty cool. And we'll type in a really difficult password to put in. And all right, everything else looks good. You can go down here and make any changes if you'd like. Just make sure here, this is checked. Samba authentication is checked and we're good there. And we now have uHub as a user. All right, very good. Next thing we need to do is go to data sets. We need to create a data set. And here we go. So add data set. And we're gonna add a, what I call a directory that we'll be accessing. And so it's pool is our path. And then we need to add a name and we'll give it the name UTH, or Ultimate Tech Hub. And we can look down here, everything is good. Everything is good, except for generic. Go ahead and do SMB and you wanna hit save. All good there. So now let's go to shares. And we need to go to Windows SMB and we need to add the path. So we're going to go down here. And here we go, pool. And we can call it my data. All right, and that's the path we're going to be going to. It's kind of the directory, I guess you would call it, it is the directory, UTH. Save it. And it's an enable the service, absolutely. First time we're doing this, it's now enabled. Woohoo! All right. So now we need one more step. So let's go back. Let's go back to data sets and let's go back to permissions. Let's go to UTH permissions and we go to edit. And we're going to go in and add a user. So add item and user. We could do group, owner, group. We're doing user and look for uhub uhub now down here you want to make the change to full control what full control so that's it right there so looks good save access control list give that a minute to process and we should be good to go all right let's check and make sure that we can get into our network here so let's go down to network and we'll type in this, our IP address of TrueNet scale, and then directory. It's gonna ask for the username, uhub, and then password, super complex password, and we are in. There we go. All right, now we're gonna create two data sets within UTH. The first one's gonna be movies. And make sure it's SMB. All right, so let's go to add user, which should be me, and then uhub, 
full control. And of course we'll add that. Then next we're gonna do the Plex configuration. All right, we're good there. So let's go add in this. There's the path. So Plex config, let's do config, SMB, save. All right, yes, we want to go ahead and go to the ACL manager. I like that a lot, how that does that already. Pretty cool. U-Hub, we want full control. There we go. Next thing you want to do is we need to put some media in here. And like I said before, I'm going to go ahead and put both of these in. Movies. Fantastic. Now let's go back to the apps and we're going to install Plex. So let's discover our apps. As you can see we've got a ton, a ton of apps. And here is Plex. So let's go ahead and click on that and click install. It's very, very simple. Now I've used Plex for five, six years now and I love it. Um, I have Plex on my other computer here, um, but this is going to be great to have this as a standalone home media server and I can dedicate my other PC just for the company for uh, videos and stuff like that, editing. So, all right. Now it's deploying. It's going to take a little bit to run. All right, now we're going to go to storage and we're going to point to the path that we need to point to for the movies. Okay. And we'll do the same for the data volume. And then configuration volume, we're going to go to config. One. Okay. Date. So once again, let me show you the Plex edit. And you can take a look at it and kind of copy what I'm doing here. Once again, you need to get your token when you go to www.plex.tv claim. And here you would get your token, you would copy it, and you would put it right here. All right, and make sure the time zone is correct as well. Make sure all your media is pointing to the right folders as well as configuration. If you have a GPU, you can use that as well. For transcoding, I do have that, and I might set that a bit later. And also, here is the port forwarding settings you want to put in your router. So, Plex server, and use the external port. Internal port is the same, 32400. And you want to have the internal IP address as your true NAS IP address. Make sure it's TCP, and save it to your port forwarding. And that will allow you to port forward, and you can access this um, outside of your network and throughout your house. All right, we are now in Plex setup. And we're not going to do this right now. Um, here we go. So this is the name, server. All right, so we're going to add library. Yes, yeah, movie type. All right, now we're going to add our movies. So browse movie folder. Now I know it's under this right here and data and we'll add that add library and then next done so now i can access these movies anywhere in my home the plex is set up and most tvs have plex apps same with like laptops tablets and phones also, I think our Roku box has a Plex app as well as the Apple box. So we should be able to watch all of these movies from anywhere in our home. So that's it. So now I got to add more movies to this. So I'll go over here, basically go in and let's uh, just go to select all. And we'll just bring it all over here. Now this is going to take a long time. This is 124 gigs. That will take a while. And before you know it, we're going to have a couple thousand movies on here. It's going to take time. <clears throat> so yeah, that's it, guys. This is how you do it. This is how you set up Plex. True NAS scale. And how to build your own home media server for free or for, I guess, less than $200.
because if I just recycled some of these drives, it would have been free. But I did want to have some brand new drives in there, and there were these are smaller. These are like one terabyte, maybe two terabytes. So having a couple four terabyte drives, that makes a big difference. But yeah, guys, so if you have any questions, please leave in the comments below. I answer all the questions. If you have any suggestions, let me know as well. And guys, remember to like, share, subscribe, comment. And for God's sakes, hit the bell icon. And I'll see you in the next video real soon. Well, that's damn good. High five. Peace.